What's happening everyone, Nick here from TV Box Top and for today's video, I have a review of a TV box from the developers of Superbox. This is the Superbox S1 Pro. So in this review, I'll take a look at its hardware, its interface and the quality of the service itself. So don't you go anywhere, I'll be right back after this. So I'm back and let's look at what's inside the box. You have the S1 Pro itself. You get an infrared remote, one HDMI cable, a 5V 2 amps DC power adapter, and a user's guide. And now a look at its design and ports. The entire body is made of plastic with the Superbox branding printed to the top. To the rear, you have one HDMI port, one Ethernet LAN port, one audio video port, an external antenna, and a DC power input. To one side, you have one USB 3.0 port, one USB 2.0, and a micro SD card reader. It's blank to the other side. To the front, you have an LED power light, and below the box, there are no ventilation holes. So, I'll connect this to my 4K TV and the capture card and continue. So, I'm connected. And this is what the boot up of the S1 Pro looks like. There's a short boot up wizard that you have to complete, then you're taken to the launcher. The launcher comprises of these large main icons that cannot be changed. And there are some shortcuts here to the bottom. You don't have the option to add any more shortcuts to the launcher and the launcher does not have a navigation bar or status bar. The included remote has some shortcuts to assist with easy navigating to some of the main features of the launcher. However, it does not feature a multitasking button. It has a one-click memory cleanup button for freeing up system resources and killing apps running in the background, an uninstall button for easy removal of unwanted apps, and some scan codes for customer support. Features of this firmware include 4K display up to 2160p at 60Hz, picture-in-picture display settings, HDR display settings, Bluetooth options, and audio pass-through options. There is no root switch, built-in screen rotation, hardware monitor settings, or digital audio output features. In the apps section, they have included a basic set of system apps, and for easy installation of important apps needed for the main feature of this box, they have provided an app store where you can easily install all these apps with one click. I've already gone through the list and installed all the apps needed for this review. Before I get into its features, let's take a quick look at its system and hardware information. The hardware used in this box is Allwinner and this is the model of the mainboard. It comes with 2GB of DDR3 RAM according to the product description and 16GB of internal storage from which this is the remainder after the Android installation and all of the apps installed. The Bluetooth version is 4.1 also according to the product description. The CPU is the Allwinner 86 and it's a 64-bit quad-core Cortex-A53 CPU clocked at 1.8 GHz configured in 32-bit mode. I see here that some of the CPU cores are going in and out of sleep mode interactively and they have done this to help regulate heat as this is the Allwinner 86 CPU that is known for overheating. However, you have the option to change the CPU governor scale from interactive to performance using the kernel auditor tool that will result in higher performance but it will also generate more heat. Below here it shows that the box has support for only 32-bit ABIs which means it can only run 32-bit applications. Its display is powered by the Mali G720 GPU with a refresh rate of 60Hz and open GLES version 3.1 which is not ideal for gaming or 4K video playback but it will handle 1080p videos and low end games without issues. You have dual band Wi-Fi support and it shows that the 5GHz band is supported. The operating system is Android 7 Nougat and it says here that the box is rooted. The box runs between 60 and 70 degrees Celsius under normal activities and I will monitor it for overheating issues during this video. 
It comes with all the decoders needed for 4K video playback, but it lacks Dolby and DTS decoders. And that's it for system and hardware information, and let's now take a quick look at some benchmarks. These are the results of the RAM copy speed and the internal storage read and write speeds. These are the results of the Wi-Fi bands and the Ethernet LAN speed tests. This is the result of the Antutu benchmark. These are the scores of the Geekbench 4 CPU benchmark. And these are the scores of the 3DMark Gamers Bench GPU benchmark. These benchmarks are low scores and they will result in a lower placement on the chart. So after entering the scores on my rankings chart, the Superbox S1 Pro is at position 30, which is last on this list. You can view this chart on my website in full spreadsheet format where you can interact with it and compare various scores. See the link in the description below this video. OTP quality without issues. However, when you attempt to play videos at 4K 2160p, the video freezes. The box is rooted, but it does not have a root switch feature. You have a Google Wide Vine Level 3 with no HDCP protection. This results in Netflix limited to basic 480p quality. You have a Super Control app that allows you to use your mobile phone as a remote to navigate to the box. Casting your mobile device to the box works ok with the included Miracast app. I won't be showing any 4K video playback or Dolby and DTS surround sound demonstration because the S1 Pro does not have these features. So I'll just play an Android game and check for overheating. Game played fairly ok, but you do have some overheating issues. So viewers, I've come to the end of this review. The S1 Pro is not the class of TV box you would usually spend that amount on when it comes to hardware quality, and I'm only recommending this box based 100% on the quality of the service. And with that said, if you would like to get your hands on this box, a link can be found in the description below this video. You can find this box almost everywhere online. But using my links to purchase supports this channel directly and provides the means for me to acquire new boxes for review, so thanks for your support. Thanks for watching. Give this video the thumbs up if you enjoyed the presentation or the information was of value. And if you are new to this channel, hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell before leaving to be notified when I release a new video or do a giveaway. Keep streaming and I'll be seeing you in the next one.